All right, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel. Guys, we've got a budget review. This knife sells for $45 on White Mountain Knives. And of course, you can get 10% off with code KNIVESFAST at checkout. And uh, so let's say hi to Rin and Stimpy first and Powdered Toast Man and Log and TV. And let's get started on the Tucson TS. Come on, stand up for me, would you? Tucson TS 132. Now, guys, again, $45 uh, for this big chunk of D2 and uh, beautiful looking micarta. Uh, really, really big chunk of a Warncliffe, man. This thing is crazy. So let's pick it up and show it off a little bit. Uh, we'll shut it first so you can see it closed. Uh, you have uh, rounded contoured scales, but you do come up with a little bit of a 90 degree, not quite 90 degree, but a little sharp angle here, but we'll talk about that. It's not a big deal, but you can see the contouring is really well done. You do have flat heads, not flat head, but flat, yeah, flat top screws here. And because of the chamfering, those do stand out just a little bit, but they don't bother me. Uh, you do have round screws uh, under there for the pocket clip, but you have plenty of clearance in and out of the pocket. This clip is great. Good retention, no problem. Now, it is not quite uh, deep, you know, all the way to the end carry, but it's pretty deep. Uh, it is only right hand tip up only. Uh, you do have a pretty long backspacer that looks to be maybe black G10. Uh, kind of some uh, pretty aggressive jimping, if I can not choke, uh, all the way through. Now, you've got it on both, both scales, on both liners, and on the backspacer, so that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, you have jimping on the flipper tab. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this, the texture of this micarta is really good. It's very, very nicely done. It's fairly smooth to the touch, but it's got great grip to it, if that makes any sense. Flip this sucker open. Now, you do have quite a bit of uh, billboarding on this one. You got Tucson on this side. Now, we talked about this in the unboxing. Shoot, that blade is dirty. Give me a second. We're going to make it look pretty. I've been cutting with it. Um, you have Tucson on this side, and then we wondered why over on this side you had Y Start uh, TS 132 D2. I think from talking to Justin at OCD for EDC, who does sell uh, Tucson knives, he believes this because this is on the side that you would typically see uh, the designer that this is the Y Start design knife produced by Tucson, and that kind of makes some sense. Uh, you know, and that's really cool. And by the way, I kind of like this uh, this groove that doesn't impede with the grip at all. You do have, uh, you know, kind of a, a fairly thick spine. We'll talk about that in a minute. No swedging to speak of. There is good chamfering, as you can see, on the edges. You do have a nice, generous uh, hole to open it with. A uh, good finger choil with plenty of relief for the plunge grind there. And a great tip. And you can see how this comes down uh, on that worn cliff with a nice, nice tip uh, for those of you that like to cut detailed cuts. Now, since we're talking about cutting, let's just do this and get it out of the way. Uh, yes. Uh, this guy, I tried to turn it there. That didn't do... This guy will cut. Uh, it's D2, but it is absolutely deadly sharp. Uh, this knife is very sharp, very nice. It cuts cardboard very, very well. As a matter of fact... I think this knife would excel with cardboard. Um, I don't have a good piece in front of me right now, or I would, well, maybe that'll work. Let's see if I can grab it. Uh -huh. See, I should have just stuck with my first answer, which is that I don't have any. Uh, and this is pretty thick, so we'll see if I'm making a mistake here by doing this on camera. I'm trying to find a spot that doesn't have a bunch of tape. Here we go. Okay, so you can see, I mean, just destroys it as long as I'm not at a terrible angle, which I am. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta have to get some better pieces of cardboard over here, guys. But trust me, I cut some cardboard with it earlier uh, outside where I can get my hands not wrapped around the back of a camera. And trust me, it cuts cardboard. Uh, that's why I don't do cutting on camera that much because it's just hard to do wrapping my arms around a tripod here like this. Um, but anyway, all right, so let's talk about grip. So. It is a four finger grip for me, but just. So you see where this angle comes down? Um, I'm right on the edge. Now I have basically four inch wide hands, um, but you do have a choil where you can choke up. And when I do that, I've got plenty of room. 
Uh, very, very much so. I like that. Now, by doing what they did back here, taking this handle down basically to the same shape of the blade, which, by the way, uh, we might be off to the show side just slightly, but barely. Um, by doing that, you make the knife a little shorter than you would otherwise uh, to do that. So, you know, to me, it's plenty of handle, especially if you're choked up, which is the money grip. Now, you do have good jimping up here. And in this pinch grip like this, uh, the knife is very, very easy to handle. And it is a high flat grind, not a full flat grind. It is satin uh, all over. And you can just, oh, actually, it's stone washed up top there, isn't it? Hold on. Let's wipe it one more time because cutting that cardboard made it a little gummy. And then maybe we can see it a little bit better. All right. Let's see what we got here. So, yeah, it looks like maybe, no, nah, it's still satin. It's just a different direction of satin. You got this directional, a uh, vertical satin here, and just a really, really uh, soft satin up on the flats there. Very, very cool. It is D2. Do we have a marking here that says D2? Sure don't see it if it, if it is. Um, hold on, let me look at it off camera to make sure I'm just... Oh, you know what? It's right here. It's on the, the uh, grind proper there. So there you go. Very, very nice. All right. So, uh, really cool, again, uh, so let's talk about lockup. Yeah, no no lock rock, no blade play. You got like a, maybe a 15 here, 10 to 15. So, you know, it could be a little bit further in, but it's definitely not going anywhere. Uh, good access to the lock bar, but not great. Uh, no problem, though, really. You just take your thumb across, and it disengages. There's no lock stick or any issues. Uh, it does... Uh, you, you, it's a shaker, not uh, a, uh, uh, whatever the word is, not a dropper. So you got to shake it home. Uh, and I believe, uh, yes, it's on bearings. Um, and just really, really nice. Does it say it's on bearings for sure? I'm assuming it is. Does not say on White Mountain Knives, but I, I believe looking down in there, yep, those are bearings. So I feel pretty good about that. Good and open, uh, you know, for the most part, you do see some some weight reduction. Yep, very much so. Plenty of weight reduction uh, going on down inside there. But the backspacer does come pretty far across. Uh, again, let's talk about these where I said they were kind of 90 degrees. Because the handle is big and round, it's not a huge deal for me. Some of you, you may feel it, and you're not going to really feel it here. Where you're going to feel it is right here. Um, and so there's a little bit of that. It could have been chamfered off just a little bit better. Now you do have this spot to come up and put your thumb or this spot to put your, your finger or this spot to put your finger. So you got lots of choices on the grip of this knife. So that's really sweet. Will it stand up? Well, no, it just does not want to stand up. So uh, the overall length of this is 8.35 guys. I like that. But again, don't forget that little, probably half to three quarters of an inch of the handle, at least to me are not very worthwhile on your finger because it just doesn't feel right having it up on that angle. Maybe to you it does. Blade length 3.35, blade thickness 0.15. Like I said, not super thin. Uh, D2 steel satin finish. Now, 59 Rockwell hardness, which I think for D2 is pretty good. Uh, handle is 4.8. Again, don't forget you've got that link that in my mind I kind of discount. Um, and then brown linen my card on my handle, my handle, and uh, 4.87, almost five ounce knife. And again, for the chunk that it is, and it's it's pretty thick. Let's see what I've got sitting here. So here is uh, my Rat One, and you can see it's it's thicker than a Rat One. Uh, and part of that is it's it's contoured and rolled, but it is a pretty thick handle. Uh, might as well while we got this out, let's do the Rat One as a size comparison. You can see very very close there. Might as well, Rat 2 sitting over here as well, just for size comparison. And you can see it's got the Rat 2 by a lot. Um, so there you go, Rat 1, Rat 2 is your comparison. I'll probably use those a little bit because I sold my PM2 and my PM3 now, uh, my pair of three. So I don't have uh, Spider Coast to compare with, so the Rat 1 and Rat 2 will probably be my comparison when I do that. I just wanted you guys to see kind of how chunky this guy really is. So there you go. Again, $45 at White Mountain Knives. Check it out. Thanks, Justin, for sending this one along for me to check out. 
and I will be getting this back to you. Now, guys, I want to take back something I said here. Okay, does it say here? I want to, I want to change something. I said this was a high flat grind. Uh, I lied. This is a hollow grind, guys. I apologize for that. It is definitely a hollow, and that would explain why with that 0.15 up here, uh, it cuts really, really well on that paper, uh, and it's because of that hollow. Man, it is a shallow hollow, but it is a hollow. So there you go. Uh, I'm glad I double-checked that. So that is really, really cool. So again, the Tucson TS-132. A little longer review here, but I had a lot to say. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, hopefully. And guys, I appreciate all your support and uh, for watching the Knives Fast channel.